starting in three, two, one. As a protein, we support carbon taxes because it's gonna help reduce global warming and help the environment. Our firm is that the environment comes first before anything, including the economy. Because A, the environment is hard to replace, such as oil spills, Fukushima, etc. B, the, the, B, then uh, the economy can recover much quicker, such as depressions. And C, the environment fuels the economy, not the other way around. As a protein, we have three contentions to back this up. Contention one, global warming. First, global warming is, happen is happening and caused by humans. Overwhelming scientific consensus supports this. According to a meta-analysis by scientist James Powell, James Powell reviewed more than 24,000 scientific articles on climate change published between 2013 and 2014. Powell identified 69,406 authors, for whom four of whom rejected climate change as being caused by human emissions. That is one in every 17,352 scientists. I only found 0.006% who rejected it. Scientists are virtually unanimous. Anthropogenic global warming is true. Second, our carbon tax can help. It is the single best way to cut CO2 emissions and prevent the worst effects of global warming, droughts, floods, and superstorms. According to L Laura Tyson, a professor at Berkeley's business school, a carbon tax is the most effective way to discourage carbon consumption and lower the risk of catastrophic climate changes. In May, our car carbon dioxide reached 400 parts per million. UN, UN negotiators has set a limit of 450 parts per million to prevent irre irreversible changes. The world will cross this limit in a matter of decades. Evidence of climate changes everywhere, melting Arctic ice and extreme weather patterns, including record droughts, heat waves, ep epic floods, and superstorms. A carbon tax is the most effective and simplest way to reduce carbon emissions. Carbon emissions have an unpriced societal cost. A tax on carbon reflect these costs and discourage carbon emissions. Producers and consumers would adjust their behavior. Any tax on carbon would be an important step in the right direction. Um, contention two, green economy. A carbon tax would help the U.S. move toward green economy by boosting economic growth while also benefiting the environment. O according to Richard, Richard Caperton, writing for the Center of American Progress, a, ca a carbon tax will be paired with additional investments in clean energy. There would, there would be a great need to repair transportation and water infrastructure. Some revenues from the carbon tax would be directed toward these sectors. These, invest, these investments benefit the econo economy. Infrastructure investments would pe put people to work. Even after protecting low-income consumers and investing in infrastructure, billions of dollars would be left over to help address our nation's debt. Climate change, ec economic growth, and fiscal responsibility may not appear to be intimately linked. They all have different causes. However, a price on carbon can make a significant contribution in solving each of these challenges. Contention three, oil dependence. If a U.S. adopts carbon tax, it would expedite our transition away from fossil fuels. We must act immediately, recently argued Elon Musk. Rem Removing hidden sun seas and imposing a fee on carbon will hasten the switch from fossil fuels to greener energy sources. The goal would be moved away from fossil fuels as quickly as possible with society instead of using sustain sustainable energy sources that would be good for a billion years. How do we accelerate this transition away from fossil fuels to a sustainable era? We have to have a carbon tax. There needs to be a clear message from the government in this regard. Because of the fundamental problem, the rules, is your rules today and send people to create carbon. This is madness. This is important. The U.S. oil dependence fosters unstable governments often hostile to the U.S., reports Daniel Wise and Rebecca Lefton from the Center of American Progress. The United States imported 4 million barrels of oil a day from dangerous or unstable countries. As a major contributor to the oil, to the global demand for oil, the United States is paying to finance and sustain unfilling regimes. Without reducing our dependence on oil, we'd be forced to increasingly look at more antagonist and volatile countries that pose direct threats to our uh, national security. Thank you. Resolved, the United States federal government should adopt the carbon tax. As the con team, we stand in near uh, clear negation of this topic. Before we begin, we'd like to define the following words in the resolutions. First, should. Austin Freely, professor of communication, John Kerry University, defines should as the following. Quote, should means that action is desirable and workable. The formative must show the outline of its policy and indicate that the details could be worked out. Two, carbon tax. Felicity Dean defines carbon tax in environment and law, planning law journal as, quote, carbon tax may be defined to include only those taxes directly related to carbon content of a commodity. The express purpose is to mitigate climate change. Contention 1, carbon leakage. A carbon tax implemented by the United States federal government would be impractical due to carbon leakage, which is currently characterized by the movement of companies offshore in order to escape said tax. Susan Goldenberg writing for The Guardian states, quote, countries outsourcing their carbon pollution to rising economies. Carbon dioxide emissions have more than doubled. A growing share of global emissions are traded across international borders. And a carbon tax will only worsen the situation. Derek Morgan writing for the Heritage Foundation, quote, unilateral action by the U.S. will have very little effect on total global emissions. A U.S. Uh, carbon tax will increase foreign emissions because of a phenomenon called carbon leakage. As, intensive uh, as energy intensive industries locate from the U.S. to other nations such as China, such as China GHG emissions and toxic pollutants can increase more than if they would in the U.S. The impact of this argument 
argument are threefold. First, this turns all the affirmative arguments against them because carbon taxes will be a catalyst for countries to release more CO2 emissions. Two, this hurts the U.S. economy greatly. With the movement of thousands of biz businesses overseas, hundreds of thousands of United States citizens will be left without a job and without a method of putting food on the table. Three, this decreases the likelihood of any other ca country adopting carbon tax because of the increased revenue that country will be getting due to an influx of companies to their regions. Contention two, carbon taxes have de devastated economic effects that abuse those of low socioeconomic status. David Kreutzer, senior research fellow at the Heritage Foundation states, quote, low income families spend a larger proportion of their income on energy. A tax will disproportionately affect the poorest American families. Businesses pass costs onto consumers. This is a huge deal. The wider the wealth gap, the more it harms the economy and threatens democracy. According to Michael Hiltzfig, writing for the LA Times, quote, rising economic inequality in the United States is hampering economic growth and punching holes in the social fabric. Inequality may also spur political instability. Income inequality can harm sustained economic growth. Contention 3, alternatives. So point A, cap and trade. A cap and trade system, notable one in which is a hard cap on CO2 emissions, will provide many benefits to its carbon tax counterpart. Yo Environment Forum report, quote, a cap and trade system would place progressively stricter limits on fossil fuel use. That cap and trade option has many more supporters. Supporters of the cap and trade argue that as two main strengths. First, it sets a steadily declining ceiling on carbon emissions. And two, it rewards companies for slashing CO2. Subpoint B, carbon sequestration. Carbon sequestration technology takes in CO2 emissions before they reach and harm the ozone layer and emit them into a primarily vegetative environment or a geological sublayer where the carbon will dissipate and be useful to the environment. Muradov writes for the Clean Energy Institute of the University of Miami, quote, the feasibility of CO2 sequestration has already been proven on large scale systems. For example, over 28 million metric tons per year of CO2 is currently being sequestrated for enhanced oil recovery in Texas and now New Mexico. And this takes away the need for any carbon policy as a whole writes Damien Carrington, Department of Head of Environment at The Guardian, quote, the tackling climate change actually improve economic growth by, pro by providing other benefits. With CCS, it entirely po possible for fossil fuels to continue to be used on large scales on large scale. The impact of this argument are twofold. First, it proves that carbon tax are not the best way to cut down CO2 emissions and therefore takes any ob obligation away from the federal government. Two, it proves that the carbon tax and CO2 emissions cutting programs as a whole are not needed in our world today. Thank you. Can I have the first question? Uh, sure. All right, for global warming, first question. Okay. Carbon taxes don't cut 100% emissions like carbon sequestration. If we really want to help the environment, shouldn't we just go with this alternative? Well, yes. Well, when you said that, it does not fully stop global warming. It is not overnight. Because mm -hmm. as soon as you imply, like, or, like, implement a tax, you, you cannot mm -hmm. expect people just to, like, automatically, like, stop global warming and switch to clean energy sources. It takes a long period of time for it actually to go, like, start working. Mm -hmm. Well, my question is, with a carbon sequestration, we can guarantee 100% elimination of carbon emission. Because basically, like I said in my there contention, are... we're taking the emission from the atmosphere and we're putting them underground. While a carbon tax, it cannot guarantee 100% of removal of the carbon emissions. Well, a carbon tax does 100% guarantee people who pay oil they're going to pay an extra tax, and then later on, if people and then like later on, people they they're going to have to switch to a clean energy. All right, this kind of brings up to my next point. W with wealth gap, there are rich people and there are poor people. Yes. The rich people have the money to buy and buy. The, the, the carbon tax doesn't stop them. They simply just pay the tax. So you, this kind of contradicts your agreement. I mean, your statement because carbon tax cannot stop 100%. Uh, Wait, how does, how, does, how does it not contradict? Wait, how does it contradict? Because you said that carbon, uh, carbon tax can stop carbon emission 100%. Yes. But as I stated, rich people can simply just pay the carbon tax. Well, then maybe you can make, you could also make carbon taxes like proportionate to like low income families and higher income families. But this doesn't, this can, but the, like, like I said, rich people can still pay the tax. That's so why you make it proportionate. For, low, for lower income families, you can make the tax like lower, and for high income families, you can make it like, like very expensive. But so. th this doesn't stop them 100% though. Well, in time it will. But still doesn't stop them 100%. What I'm trying to say is that carbon sequestration can stop at 100% as soon as possible. Can we move on to the next question? Sure. All right, you have okay. a question? Uh, yes, in your, uh, well, with a cap and trade system, mm -hmm. you have to have uh, like permits, then you have to give it to like companies and people. But since you're like around 300 million people, um, in the United States, mm -hmm. and then there are like around like a hundred, or like over around a hundred big companies. What it wasn't it be like almost impossible, and there would be like fake permits because it would be like almost impossible to keep track of every single permit that's in the United States. So you're, what you're telling me is that people can have fake permits. Yes. Yeah. Fake permits. It's well, like fake money. The <laughs> fake money. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're like saying there's fake money in the U.S. Is what no, no, so no. you're saying? 
wouldn't there be fake permits in if a cap and trade system? That, all right, that wouldn't happen because the businesses they're gonna give the people actual per like. Why would a company in the, like they're trying to do what they're trying to do for the best of themselves and the economy? But what? So why would it wouldn't be logical or ethical for them to give fake per permits? Well, if it's fake permits, they can keep on getting more oil, and they will, like if you have more permits, you can there the limit of oil you can have is keeps on going higher and higher. So like, why wouldn't there be fake permits? So, but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be ethical because the fake permits wouldn't help the uh, companies. All right. Um, All right. Is everyone ready? Judges ready? Um, yeah. Opponents ready? Yes. Partner ready? Yes. Okay. First, I'd like to begin with a quick off-time roadmap. Um, first, I'd like to first I'll state the framework, then I'll state the responses. So, starting in three, two. One. First, I'd like to go over the framework. The framework being that the the, eco the environment is more important than the economy. They have not they have not stated a framework, so therefore they must judge our on our framework that the environment is more important than the economy. As I've mentioned before in previous results, therefore there's no need to go over framework. Our framework is applying because they do not have one. Now I'd like to go over global warming. One global one. We are solving global warming. Remember, the environment is more important than the economy. So we so, so you should focus more on what helps the environment than what have, have, helps the economy. Global warming. We are preventing global warming by increasing CO2 emissions. One. One, it discourages. Even if people, even if people, even if there is no hard cap, a higher price discourages people from buying CO2. Therefore, people will use less CO2 and go for a cheaper alternative. People will always, people will always use what is cheaper. And therefore, if carbon is more is cheap, carbon is more expensive. People will go to cleaner sources which are cheaper. N B, CO2 helps. Remember, the more CO2, remember CO2 in the mar CO2 having a tax is good because people will be discouraged. Again, I cannot stress this enough. People will do what it takes to get for, to pay less. People will want to pay as little as possible. Therefore, if you if if carbon if carbon tax the carbon tax is applied and it costs money, people will want to spend less money and they'll go to cleaner sources of energy. This helps solve global warming because no carbon, carbon usage is reduced. Now I'd like to go in response to the, con the carbon leakage company. Point one, if a company can pay to move overseas, then they, will, they can pay a tax. It costs too much for a company to move overseas. It doesn't matter how much of a company it moves overseas. It costs a lot of money to move, it costs a lot of money to move a company overseas. B, B, loss of a market. Moving a company overseas means it loses them a direct market in the United States, which leads to C, shipping, shipping, co shipping costs. Producing things overseas means they have to sh ship, their, ship their goods all the way to the United States and into a company. Company. All this hassle and all this extra cost makes it makes it a ridiculous attempt as companies will try to save money to move offshore. This will not happen as well as B. We have rules to keep them from doing that. We can put bills and we can put bills in place. We, we can put laws in place to make sure companies do not do that. And C. Unilateral support. The, the carbon tax in the United States is not the perfect solution. However, it is a step in the right direction. The United, other nations will follow the United States example as the United States is the predominant power in the world. We do not need to, besides, the, the point is, we want, the point is, this affects everyone around the world. There, the economy only affects the United States and to a lesser degree other countries. However, the environment affects everyone. Global warming is not disproportionate. It happens equally in every part of the world. Therefore, other, com other countries will both try to, other, con un other countries will try to do this both because of the United States influence and because they care about the environment and also the public image on a lesser note. Now I'd like to go to job loss. More jobs will be created in Lost. There are only twenty thousand. There are only twenty thousand oil, gas, and oil, gas, and um, coal jobs in the United States currently. However, there are nearly three million solar jobs alone. Therefore, there will be mo much more job, many more jobs generated in, in the clean sector than there, there will be lost in the in the oil sector. Now, I also, I'd also like to go to the. I'd also cross apply to the wealth gap. You see, the problem with wealth gap, wealth gap is that one, the, with more jobs, the the greater greener market will be expanding because of a competition because people will want to pay. People will want to use green power because oil costs too much, so people will begin. So that more, more, more companies will mean more jobs. More companies means a higher GDP, higher income. More companies will become more. More companies will come into the green market and try to make money. Therefore, this destroys job loss and wealth gap because more jobs will be created in the green market with all these new companies and all this new innovation that's created by the competition of capitalism. And B, this will also destroy the wealth gap as well because people will have jobs and people will be able to pay as much as they need. And this is also important because people will have jobs and they'll be able to pay as much as they need for the for the, for the clean energy, which solves the problem. That it, it's not, it's not dis it's not disproportionately affect the poor. The poor will have the money from this new job market to pay for their taxes if they still use oil and other dirty sources. Finally, I'd like to go to the faults in the cap and trade system. One, a cap and trade system is easy, it's very hard to keep track of. You need to have a permit for every company, every person. You need to make sure everyone is doing their part and, and polluting as little as possible. That is very hard to do. Whereas a carbon tax, if you buy a gallon of gas, you have to pay a tax. It is a very simple, clear, forward system. Out B, there are some problems. The same, it has the same problems as a CO2 tax. You say that carbon leakage will make companies move overseas. However, a cap and trade will do the exact same thing. Through, through a cap and trade system, companies will still have to maintain their carbon records. And if they are moving overseas because of a small tax, imagine the trouble that they'll have to go through to try and maintain an entire permit system. A company will move overseas if anything happens. So it does. So even if a company moves overseas, the cap and trade system will have the same thing if the company decides to move overseas and carbon leakage is true. Faking exists. Faking exists. Remember, people can still fake permits. They fake money all the time, and, and a lot of people don't get caught. Yes, there are some people that get caught. But that happens rarely. Opponents ready? Uh, yes. Partner? Yes. And judges? 
Okay, then let's start time now. So the first observation we make on the pro team is that their framework is going to be that the environment is the most important thing. Add to this environment that the affirmative also has the burden to prove to you how a carbon tax is going to pass through Congress and that the United States alone has the burden to... Uh, has the obligation to pass a unilateral carbon tax. If they don't prove both of these, then we don't even get to environment on the flow. Also, environment uh, matters just as much as economy in this debate because remember that the United States federal government is the actor. The actor is only going to want what's best for the United States. So that drops their environment right there. So let's go to their first contention where they talk to you about global warming. First, carbon taxes don't solve global warming. A carbon tax won't reduce CO2 emissions that much. Brad Plumer, writing for the Washington Post, says, quote, a carbon tax might not make a significant dent in U.S. global warming emissions. Modern economies are so heavily dependent on fossil fuels that there's only so much we can reasonably cut back. With the carbon tax, emissions do start declining, but by 2030, emission levels stall. The United States wouldn't get anywhere near the 80% cut by 2050. Second, the impact is far away. Global warming won't have a large effect for decades, we can develop many other solutions before then. As of right now, we need to focus on short-term problems like the economy. Third, go to our alternatives. If you're going to buy this impact of global warming, use the alternatives because they solve much better. Remember, Victor admits to you in his response speech that a carbon tax doesn't have a, so uh, doesn't have a hard cap, while we tell you with a cap and trade system and carbon sequestration, which was unanswered, we solve 100% of emissions because the emissions never go up into the ozone layer to begin with. Uh, after that, fourth, a tax fails because the rich can buy as much carbon as they want and ignore the tax. Remember that the taxes empirically have been very small amounts. So as long as you have a company with the amount of money uh, to spend uh, on carbon emissions, they can spend as much as they want and pollute as much as they want. And finally, a unilateral carbon tax has no effect. And remember that that's the only thing the affirmative is uh, going for. Richard W. Rain, right, writing for the Senior Fellow Cato Institute and Chairman of the Institute for Global Economic Growth, says, quote, at most, people estimate that the U.S. contribution will only be about 0.2 degrees Celsius. Does it make sense for the United States to impose a carbon tax when emissions from the rest of the world, notably India and China, would be responsible for 93% of the temperature rise? Even with very high taxes on carbon dioxide emissions, the amount of warming that would be pre prevented is too small to measure on a 50-year time scale. After this, we go on to their second contention about green economy, don't buy this argument because first, more jobs are lost than gained. Renewable energy is just too expensive. Jordan Lomberg says, quote, job creation cannot be defended as another benefit of well-meaning green policies. The number of jobs that these policies create is likely to be offset or worse by the number of jobs that they destroy. Second, even if you buy the argument that there will be money coming into the economy, remember that this tax revenue will be wasted because the United States federal government is a very inefficient actor. Lenny Bernstein writes for the Washington Post, quote, a report released Monday by a respected think tank in the United States places the United States dead last in its quality of healthcare systems when compared to 10 other Western industrialized nations. Not only did the United States fail to move up, although the United States spends more on healthcare than any other country and has the highest proportion of specialist physicians. After that, Third, don't buy this argument because there's going to be carbon leakage so you're not going to have any revenue generated at all. Jerry Taylor writes for the uh, conservative case for carbon tax. Quote, adoption in Europe has failed to capture 20% of the emissions. A carbon tax applied to the United States economy fails to capture 14%. After this, let's go on to their contention where they talk to you about oil dependence. This doesn't solve the problem. Consumers will still use fossil fuels, argues Ann Mulkern of Greenwire. Quote, when it comes to oil products, people be people's behavior is fairly fixed over the short term. There aren't readily substitutes for oil. People must drive to get to work, and a $20 price for carbon would result in 20 cents per gallon uh, diesel fuel jet fuel and host of manufactured products. Second, we don't even buy fuel from the Middle East. We don't buy a significant amount, so we don't uh, support unfriendly regimes. Corey Flintoff writes for NPR. Today, the United States actually gets most of its uh, imported oil from Ca Canada and Latin America. Start time now. May I have the first question? Sure. Okay. You stated, um, you stated that in your green, you stated in your green economy response that uh, that the tax revenue would be wasted under the effect of a carbon tax. However, if Congress is a bad enactor, wouldn't a cap and trade system take a long time to implement because it takes longer to implement and would also be inefficient? Actually, we don't see this empirically. If you look at the case study of California, California implemented a cap and trade system. Right now, they get almost a billion dollars per year, and this is just one state that's implemented a cap and trade system. It's passed through there. It, carbon sequestration is also passed through Congress, and it works very efficiently. If it is not empirical, then how can you say that? That carbon tax 
will not work anywhere except your one example of a carbon trade system will work in California. Actually, let's talk about empirical examples and case studies of a carbon tax. You see in Australia that the carbon tax failed so miserably that after two years, the carbon tax was repealed. You also see this in the case of British Columbia. While initially there was an increase in the economy, after 2012 there was a, so much carbon leakage and a significant decrease in the economy. Every single case where you see carbon taxes, you also see failure. Can I have a question now? Um, may I respond? Uh, we've been on this question for over a minute. Very well. Ask okay. So I want to talk about your uh, global warming point. You say that carbon taxes are the most effective. Yes. So how do we look at effectiveness? If you don't stop 100% of the emissions going up into the air, how can you say that's effective? How, so, well, are you saying that carbon trade will solve 100% of all emissions? That I'm telling you that carbon sequestration solves 100%, and that's our second subpoint of our third contention. Carbon sequestration can coexist with carbon tax. No, it can't. It hasn't been shown to coexist because a carbon tax, you wouldn't need a carbon tax or any CO2 cutting policy. You see this in the second card that we provide to you of our second subpoint. Sequest there's, no way there's no way sequestration can provide in the entire United States of pollution. There's no way sequestration can find enough forests and enough moving and manufacturing to move the entire carbon output of the United States to forests. Yet it's already working in Texas and New Mexico. I mean, you don't have to put it in forests. You put it under any geological sublayer, and you see that this carbon dissipates, and it cuts 100% of CO2 emissions. That is 4% of, of the United States. That's two states out of 50. Okay, two states out of 50 have implemented it better than a carbon tax. Carbon taxes have been implemented globally. Yes, they have been implemented globally, and they failed globally, as I just showed you with my Australia and British Columbia example. What about Scandinavia? Scandinavia seems to be working quite well. And how long have they had their carbon tax implemented? A few years now. A few years now. That's exactly what you see with British Columbia. You see a slight increase in the economy and then a steady decline. As in five to ten years. As in five to ten years, uh, I British believe British Columbia was given uh, five years. And then after that, their economy started dropping in 2012. That's twice the amount of time. Ten years is twice the amount of time. That What's your point? You provide me with one case study where you uh, where you don't have long-term impacts. I'm telling you, in Australia it's failed, in British Columbia it's failed, but every single time a cap-and-trade system has been implemented, it's worked. Every time a sequestration system has been implemented, it's worked. Carbon you see, like, a 25% uh, success rate on your side, and you see 100% success rate on my side. The carbon tax works in Sweden, Finland, Norway, Denmark. Okay, okay opponents ready? Partner ready? Yes. Judge ready? Judges ready? Okay, starting in three, two, one. Our global, our global warming contention is basically saying that first, global warming is caused and happened by humans. And then we should, we should imply, implement a carbon tax and this will help. Uh, first, I'm, I'm going to respond to my opponent's responses. They say that it does, not, it does not solve global warming. But yes, it does not stop immediately, but it will over time. Um, second, they said the impact is far away. But in the future, we might not have any time because there's something called a tipping point. Tipping point is going to be around 2020 to 2025 where we can go back to a, a better and green economy. Also, they said that, uh, three, that alternatives are much better and you should go with the cap and trade system. But a cap and trade system has many, many flaws. And one of them is that you can have fake permits. And then it's also in, it's nearly impossible to keep track of every single permit that's going around the United States because the United States has 300 million citizens. And that's, yeah. And then also, uh, they say that... Um, um, four, that the tax fails, but you cannot avoid a carbon tax. Every time you buy oil, you are going to pay that carbon tax. And five, they say that um, uh, uh, it's, it's going to have no effect. It's going to take uh, 0.2 Celsius, but that still helps in 0.2 Celsius. And like, if you think about it, uh, it's actually a lot. And um, our green economy condition is basically saying that a carbon, ta a carbon tax would help the U.S. move to a green economy by boosting economic growth. One, our opponent said that um, there will be more jobs lost than there's going to be gained. As my partner said, that we have evidence saying that there's 6.3 million jobs in 2013 that was in the um, in in solar in the solar industry alone. And by that time, there was only 200,000 to 500,000 jobs in in the fossil fuel industry. Also, they said that um, to it would be uh, it would be the tax revenue would be wasted and it would be inefficient. But it actually won't because the, and also the tax. Um, the cap and trade system would have the same problems. And for three, they said that um, carbon leakage uh, would happen in the green economy, but that's also wrong because uh, the companies would would uh, just move overseas, and then the um, cap and tra and the cap and trade system again has the same problems. And um, our moving and uh, finally, our oil dependence contention is basically saying that if the U.S. adopts a carbon tax, it help expedite speed our transition away from fossil fuels. They said that um, it is okay. Never mind. All right, uh, partner ready? Yeah. Opponents ready? Uh, yes. Uh, Judge is ready? Yeah. All right. Starting time in three, two, 
one. First, I'm going to go over our framework. Our opponents have to prove uh, that a carbon tax can pass through Congress. And they have to, they have to uh, show that they have to disprove our contingent saying that U.S. is uh, morally and legally obligated to, uh, to um, is legally obligated to reduce uh, carbon tax, I mean, uh, CO2 emissions. First, car first, our first contingent was carbon leakage. Here we explained that if a carbon tax is implemented, it wouldn't matter because companies will move offshore to escape the tax. We show that this hurts the economy and de decreases the chance that carbon tax will be adopted elsewhere. Our opponents re responded to those questions saying companies have uh, will, uh, will easily pay off those costs to move overseas. But that's, that's not enough. That's not enough. It's, it's not enough to keep them, and they have no reason to stay, even if the tax is implemented, because they're just going to make more money off in other countries. Second, they, their second response was that there's going to be, there, uh, they can put bills to stop the companies from leaving. Like, as I said before, it's not gonna enough. They're just going to simply pay the bill, and they, they, they're still going to move to other countries. Um, and lastly, they uh, responded with carbon tax and saying if the U.S. Fall, uh, implements a carbon tax, other countries will follow, will follow the U.S. because the U.S. is uh, uh, with, because the, the other countries follow the U.S. But this is not true because the U.S. is simply one country. Considering there's hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of countries out there, one country is not going to make a major difference. Next, I'm going to go to our third contingent of alternatives. With our first subpoint, we established that we established a cap and trade system is better because it helps the environment by establishing a hard cap. Our second subpoint was carbon sequestration, which gets rid, of, gets, gets, gets rid of CO2 emissions before they reach the ozone layer. This completely eliminates the need for a carbon tax. Our opponents did not respond to our, our, our second argument of carbon sequestration. Uh, first, they responded to our, our first subpoint of cap and trade by saying that uh, a carbon tax can't, I mean, a cap and trade system is hard to keep track of, and it makes carbon liquids. But this is wrong because, like, like my partner said, in California, this has already been enacted, and it's, and it's worked successfully and gained a lot of revenue. Yep. Let's start time now. Uh, may we have the first question? Sure. Yes. Do we have. You keep focusing on proof. However, we have proof that the cap and trade system did not work in Europe. Between 2005 and 2007, which is two years, by the way, phase one of it led to a 1.9% increase in greenhouse gas emissions. How can, how can cap and trade work more if in all of Europe it failed? If in all of Europe? Okay, so first of all, in Europe, there was a carbon tax system, and it failed because there was a 20% carbon leakage. And you're going to see the same carbon leakage with 15% in the United States. Well, cap and trade also failed, so what makes your system better than mine? When did cap and trade fail? Cap and trade failed in 2005 to 2007. Okay, 2005 to 2007. Can you tell me all of the countries that were involved in this cap and trade? Let me see. No, it appears to just, no, well, Spain seems to, Spain, France, the UK, Greece, Austria, Germany, Italy, Ireland, and Portugal. Okay, so let's talk about some of these countries. These countries then went on to implement a carbon tax as well, where they lost not only uh, a little bit of money implementing governmental regulations, but they also saw uh, an increase in the wealth gap and they saw a decrease in amount of jobs. But it doesn't matter how much it failed. Both systems failed. Okay, then if both systems failed, then it would make sense to go to our second sub point about carbon sequestration. You see that working in Texas and New Mexico, you're taking out uh, 28 million tons of carbon from the atmosphere every single year, it hasn't failed, 100% success rate, better than a carbon tax. But sequestration can function alongside a carbon tax. Remember, no, it can't. We can. do have evidence of a carbon tax functioning. We've already proved that they don't go together. Carbon sequestration has worked 100%. Look, if Why you not? go back to our second card, we're telling you that if you implement a carbon sequestration policy, because it works so well, because it takes away 100% of CO2 emissions, what would you be taxing? There's no carbon for you to tax. A, a carbon tax in this case wouldn't be mutually exclusive. Can we have a question? Oh, um, well, it's probably, well, you've already had enough time, so you should probably ask a question. Yeah, okay. So, okay. if we go back to your contention, uh, where you're going to talk to me about the economy and how it's really working, uh, green economy, then why do we see this amount of leakage occurring in Europe? In Europe? Yes, we because see... There aren't laws in place to make sure they stop leakage. Oh, okay, so we're going to restrict companies' freedom to move overseas when they want to? I mean, I'm pretty sure that's illegal, but... Do you want to fix leakage or not? Uh, yeah, I want to fix leakage. But the only way to fix leakage is not through a carbon tax, it's through a CO2 sequestration policy. After implementation, there was no leakage with a CO2 sequestration policy, but there was with a carbon tax policy. But sequestration is not a unique alternative to this point. Sequestration works for either side. We just want a carbon tax to be implemented, period. A carbon tax has shown good results in the past. There's no reason not to implement it. Sequestration can occur later. Our point is... We need sequestration a tax can't occur later because the second... Okay, look. 
let me explain it this way. Cap and trade and carbon taxes, they can't go together, right? Well, Obviously not. not. Yeah. Because credits, uh, credits and having an entire different governmental regulation doesn't work that way. Is everyone ready? Judges? Opponents? Partner? Yes. All right. I'd like to begin with a quick off-time roadmap. First, I'd like to cover a framework and a fault in the other person in the other team's argument, and then I go. I'm then going to go over my voting issues. So, in three, two, one. At the end of the day, the pro team has clearly won this debate. We have shown that a carbon, uh, carbon, we have shown that a carbon tax can reduce CO2 emissions and does. Now, first, I'd like to go to the framework. The environment is more important than the economy. We can all agree on that. Therefore, we should focus on what saves the economy. That global CO2 has been shown to reduce global warming. In, in we have shown we have evidence in all over Scandinavia that and. We have evidence from all over Scandinavia that shows it is functional there, and there is no reason not to implement it. Now, first, I'd like to go to the first. I'd like to clarify that, that they keep saying that carbon tax and that the carbon tax cannot coexist with sequestration and the cap and trade system. However, they never explained as to why this did not work. They simply said it cannot work. That is a fault in their argument, as they have not shown as to why the two systems cannot coexist. And if they and our argument is based solely on the input of a carbon tax. The carbon tax is functional. We have, it works more times than it doesn't work. And if it works more times than it doesn't work, we need to implement it so that we can reduce global warming and help the environment. As any other system can be applied later. Our goal is to simply put a tax in the first uh, functional in the first place now neither now they also say that we have a burden of proof in proving congress however they ha also have that burden of proof they say that we need to prove through congress however a cap and trade system would also need to go through congress as well so they so that argument is that as well now they want that now they also said that other countries won't follow the, car the, the carbon tax system but again other countries won't follow the cap and trade system either all their points saying that we need to prove the burden of proof is on us all the proof to them because they have not shown because if congress can't pass our system they can't pass theirs either so therefore the so therefore the burden of proof and determining this work is useless as both sides can't apply to that now i'd like to go to my voting issues with this green economy the 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 green market will result in three things more jobs efficiency and innovation with a mark there is a market here that needs to be filled people will people will be unhappy with carbon tax as they should be and they'll want to go to a source that is cheaper and more efficient this new market will allow for hundreds of companies to try and compete small businesses startups grassroots organizations this is the recipe for a good economy more and more people will have jobs there'll be more businesses and more entrepreneurs making money and making jobs this will mean that more people will have jobs and that and that destroys the income inequality and destroys wealth gap as more people will have jobs to buy what they need and to survive now i'd also like to state that there will be jobs the, the jobs will be saved the economy will go up there will be no economic damage and the green sector will will create more green sources this is a win-win-win solution we have a new market that's making money that is why you should vote for the pro before i begin i'd like to provide you with a brief off-time roadmap i'll be addressing framework then i'll be going on to burden of proof uh after that i'll be addressing our voters and talking a little bit about my opponent's voters J partner ready opponents yes judge is Okay, let's start now. Okay, so you don't see any clear negation of our uh, Congress framework until the final focus. Of course, you're not allowed to bring new arguments into final focus, so you shouldn't weigh that right there. But you also see that because the pro is clearly defending the carbon tax, they have the burden of proof here. Uh, also, you see that you're not going to be uh, weighing environment over economy because we tell you that the United States federal government is the actor and the United States federal government maintains uh, environment uh, after economy empirically, so that would make the most sense. After that burden of proof, obviously they can't bring up new stuff in final focus. We have this burden of proof on the uh, on the affirmative team, and they have to go with that burden of proof. Obviously, they haven't proven to you how this is going to pass Congress, and they haven't proven to you why the United States alone as a unilateral body has to implement this carbon tax. This being said, let's move on to the voters in this round. The first voter will be our carbon leakage contention. The second one will be our alternatives contention. Carbon leakage, you see the impact of this as threefold. First, it decreases the chances that other countries will implement a carbon tax. That means at the end of the day, even if you still buy the uh, framework as being environment, don't go with, uh, a carbon tax because it will lead to carbon leakage which will lead to an increase of co2 emissions in other countries instead go with the co2 sequestration alternative also you see that carbon leakage everything that they say against this is disproven by our empirical examples from europe after that we go on to the second voter in this round which is our alternatives contention specifically sub point b carbon sequestration we tell you that this is mutually exclusive with our damien carrington evidence where he tells you Quote, with CCS, it's entirely possible for fossil fuels to continue to be used on a large scale. If it's possible for this, you don't need to use a carbon tax at all. Wipe that completely off the slate. Not to mention that was brought up in Grand Crossfire and uh, after that final focus. So you shouldn't be weighing that. Uh, either way and then after that we go on to their main voters essentially their first one was global warming your uh, this is going to be their main voter if you go with their uh, framework but remember that we solve it better because we take away 100% of emissions and that's the most important thing in this debate the fact that carbon sequestration beats everything else and for green economy they refuse to answer our rich poor gap thank you